All right, uh, my name is Gunnar Johnson, and I'm a National Science Foundation Fellow with Portland State University's GK12 program. We give ecology lessons to junior high and high school kids here in the Portland metro area. Today I want to talk to you about a really useful method for measuring and describing the trees in an area. This is called the point quarter method. If you look online, you can find lots more materials about this, but I'm gonna go through the most important steps of this wonderful survey method that is used by countless agencies, lots of actual science professionals who need to measure tree species composition and size across various areas. So our point quarter method really only requires two pieces of equipment. Uh, most fundamentally, you need to have a nice long measuring tape. Uh, also, we've got a point quarter marker here. And so the point quarter method starts with a randomly selected point somewhere in your landscape. And then you need some way to visualize breaking up the area around it into four distinct quarters, if you will. So what we've got here is just a clear piece of plexiglass with a little masking tape on it. This works great. You can also use a couple of rulers taped together, two sticks that you find. You can be pretty creative with this. Tape measure is something you really need. So again, point quarter method starts with a randomly selected point somewhere in your ecosystem or landscape that you want to describe. Uh, you might also consider stratifying your points. For instance, if you're working near a stream and you'd like to describe tree species in the riparian zone and compare them to tree species in an upland habitat. So I won't go over randomly selecting points. There's lots of references for that. You can use random number generators, dice, you can throw things. There's lots of ways to randomly select a point. But it is important that your point is randomly selected. And so for our video today, I've randomly selected a point just under my feet here. And so I'll go ahead and put our point quarter marker down so that these lines cross right over our point. And so what you need to have your students and researchers visualize is these lines extending off to the horizon, really for infinity, and breaking up the area around us into four distinct quadrants. And once we've got our random point selected, and our quadrants down over it, what we're going to do is take our tape measure, measure the distance from the point where the two lines cross to the nearest tree in each of our four quadrants. In addition to measuring the distance to the tree, we're going to collect a, a circumference measurement to see how big the trees are, and we're also going to describe the type of tree. And with my students, we usually describe either coniferous or deciduous trees. If you're working with more advanced students, feel free to go to a species level classification and really get a little more data. Um, it is important when you're selecting your trees uh, that they be large enough, usually a diameter of about 15 centimeters or so uh, is what would be a threshold of measurement because you only want to measure trees that are going to grow to adulthood and actually be part of the tree community in that area. Uh, you also want to measure uh, tree diameters uh, at breast height, which is 137 centimeters off the ground. An approximation is usually good enough. It's not the most important part of the method. The most important part is definitely selecting your point randomly and getting an accurate measure of distance from the point to the nearest tree. Uh, sometimes, in a natural area that has denser trees than this park we're in, it can be very tough to just look and see which tree is the closest. So just considering this quadrant here, I've got two very large candidate trees. They look like they're about an equal distance from the point. So we're actually gonna have to take measurements from the point to both of these trees to decide which tree is closest to a randomly selected point. Uh, so again, this is definitely a two-person method. Uh, three or four students working together can do a point quarter measure pretty rapidly, but you will need probably at least two students. Uh, so I'll have my uh, cameraman and uh, colleague hold the sharp end of the tape here over the point while I measure the distance to both of these trees to see which one is actually closest.
measure the circumference of this tree because we generally want to describe which trees are the dominant species or dominant tree type on a landscape. So a measure of growth or vigor is very important for that. Uh, again, usually we'll take this measurement 137 centimeters from the ground, but again, that's not the most important part of this method. So it looks like this tree has a circumference of 2.7 meters. And looking up, we see no foliage on it. This is a deciduous tree that has already dropped its leaves. So we can tell in this first quarter that we've measured, the nearest tree is 9.7 meters or so from our point. Um, and it's got a circumference of 2.7 meters and it's a deciduous tree. Those are the three most important pieces of information for your students to record. After they've done their first quarter, they need to repeat these measurements for the other three quarters around each point. Generally speaking, if you want to describe the species over several acres, you're probably going to want three to five points minimum. And again, consider stratifying your points if you want to compare different habitats in a field trip site or landscape. I think that's it.